Hi, and welcome to another segment of Chop It Up with the Chairman. I am so delighted our segment this time features none other than our very own Rockdale County Fire Chief, Chief Marion McDaniel. Chief, welcome to Chop It Up with the Chairman. Awesome. I'm excited, looking forward to it. I believe when this first started, we were over here at me and I said, hey, I'm waiting for my opportunity. So here I am and I'm ready to go. Here we are, Chief. I'm telling you, I was super excited about this opportunity. I've got so many things to talk about with this segment of Chop It Up with the Chairman. I'm just going to jump right in there. Let's do it. First of all, here we are on the tail end of the month of February, 2023, Black History Month. You yourself have become a Rockdale legend in terms of black history, and I really want to talk about you, your career. Let's start with when did you get into firefighting in the fire service? Uh, and take us back to the beginning of your career. But as you do that, tell us what motivated you and give us the personal story about how you uh, got into firefighting. Absolutely. So, native of Atlanta. Um, when people talk about a Grady baby, I say, I'm a Grady baby. Born at Grady, lived at Grady Homes. My mom worked at Grady. My sister worked at Grady. I worked at Grady. Had I attended Grady High School, I would have had that on lock. So I am a Grady baby. At the age of 36, well, I started at Grady. I moved to Kaiser Permanente, and I said, I just wasn't fulfilled. And I was driving to work one day, and Clayton County was advertising for firefighters. And I said, hmm, what about that? And so my son, who I didn't have a son at the time, but his dad was an Atlanta firefighter. He said, why don't you check out Atlanta? So I did. So at the age of 36, my children were 2, 4, and 10. I entered the fire service for two primary reasons. The first was to provide a better life for my children and to secure my retirement. That was it. Of course, you have to have a giving and caring spirit to do the job, but my primary goal, a lot of times you talk to firefighters and say, hey, I saw the little red fry truck when I was a little girl, a little boy. I don't have that story. My story simply started with me wanting to provide a better life for my kids. So entered the fire service, uh, worked my way up, got involved, returned to school, got my bachelor's, my master's, and I achieved the rank not only of battalion chief, but also I retired as an assistant chief. Tell us about your motivation. So, once again, I started at Grady, uh, went to Kaiser, and was, had a good career, but thinking about retirement, and my, that was one thing my parents instilled, and my mom worked at Grady for 37 years and brought home pennies for mm. retirement. My dad was the one at opening uh, persons at the Hilton downtown, and they talked about being able to retire and not having to work, not being stressed over financial status. So. I said, the only way, I, I need to do something different. I want to, uh, once again, provide better for my kids and secure my retirement. And those were the two reasons. So entering the fire service at 36, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to give them 30 years, which is most of a fire service career, uh, because 55 is going to roll around really quick. So I promoted myself as far as becoming a paramedic. I got involved, everything I can get involved in to learn as much as I can. Uh, returned to school and got my bachelor's at the age of, I think, 42. Continued on and got my master's. Now, in between that time, when I achieved the rank of lieutenant, I worked in internal affairs. Okay. So I went to Fulton County Police Academy at the age of 45. Wow. And I still maintain that mandate today. Wow. So, Chief, you have, uh, it's safe to say, somewhat of a dual uh, certification because you have the uh, a police mandate as well uh, when you worked at Internal Affairs. But, but I want to just back up because something else you talked about was um, forward planning and forward thinking about retirement and long-term planning. Mm -hmm. uh, that was really important. I, I heard that you received that from both your mom and your dad, yes. always thinking about the future. So you not be in a, you would not be in a, a position where in your latter years, or maybe our golden years, uh, that you were financially stressed. Talk a little bit more about why that's really important. It's important because, particularly in any career, but particularly in the fire service, uh, you're, you're the wear and tear on your, not just your physical, but your mental. And what, most often when you're fighting fire hard, that's why you gotta get in and work hard. You can't stay on that fire truck forever. And you can't work in no job forever. But when you retire, you wanna be able to have some type of financial comfort, that if you work, you're working because you want to. It's a want, not a need. And so even coming back to me, I, I worked hard. My whole goal was to provide for my kids, secure my retirement, and be able to retire. 
turned 55 September 6, 2017. In the midst of that, because I have promoted myself, I am involved. People know Marion McDaniel, Lieutenant Mac, Captain Mac, Chief Mac. Uh, I heard a little birdie told me about a position, opportunity out here in Rockdale County. And I said, yeah, you know, at the time, the person I was seeing, Chicago firefighter, that was my thing, is going to retire, head on up there and hang out with him. And then uh, start l talking about it, listening more about it. And quite honestly, I had an opportunity to meet you and we talked about it. And I said, yeah, okay. So wasn't looking for my post-fire career to be another fire career. But I tell you, uh, it, the pleasure I get because I know what struggles I had as a single mom opportunities that a lot of people don't have. That is my reason for being where I am today. I secured my, my children, I have my retirement, and I'm thankful for the additional financial blessing. But now I want to give that blessing to others. Chief, you, I really appreciate your passion and you, you're speaking straight from your heart. I want to go back to something you said a moment ago. Number one, you talked about the investment you made into your own career. Uh, you really didn't talk about leaning on anyone else mm -hmm you poured into yourself. Uh, you went back to school at age 42, then you continued to matriculate forward to receive your master's degree. But also you talked about the stress and the strain of the fire industry and mental illness. And I've seen over this last couple of years with the, the pandemic, uh, we've been keeping up with a lot of what's happening with public safety personnel all across the country and firefighters, the suicide rate has really gone up. I want you to talk a little bit about, you know, mental illness is one of the hottest topics everywhere, but a lot of folks don't think that public safety or social service type providers, uh, the people who are taking care of the people are oftentimes uh, enduring or experiencing some of the same uh, impact or effects that the people that will serve. Talk about uh, the impact of mental health and mental illness or perhaps overall mental well-being with firefighting in the fire industry? So let me start by saying that, you know, firefighters will work 24 hours a day, 10 days a month, 120 days a year, 24, 24 hours you're away from your family. And that's a single parent or a married couple. It still requires a lot of support. Every firefighter doesn't have that support. It is important. Uh, and so with that being said, you're coming to work, you're running these calls, be it a fire or medical call, and oftentimes, I've experienced it myself, you respond to a call that resembles your personal life. Mm. And you, whether it's a good outcome, a positive outcome, the person is alive and thriving, or in some cases, they lost their life, you're dealing with that. And not having someone to talk to about it, because a lot of times, you go home, your family don't want to hear it. Chief, I'm going to press you right here, right there. Let's take a deeper dive. Mm -hmm. Tell me one of the most memorable experiences, good, bad, or indifferent, uh, that have stayed with you over the years of your service that will probably never leave your, your, your intellect or your memory. Talk about something that really stands out in your career that you would just uh, blew your mind, had you in awe, but you'll never forget it. Oh, I, I tell you that. Uh, so uh, I worked at Grady Hospital back in the day. So seeing trauma come in, I'm used to that. Um, but I was working at Station 10, which is right there on Boulevard up from the zoo. Okay. It was a nice Saturday day. We were sitting out on a ramp, and a car speeds up on a ramp and said, hey, i um, been trying to get in touch with my roommate all day. I haven't heard from him, but I hear the music playing at his apartment. Right over off Memorial Drive, the old mattress co company, they had turned into lofts. So we immediately go and we grab, and you go into the hallway, and the police were on the outside, and we could hear them force the window. And so by that time, my lieutenant, the driver, myself was there. So as I bent down to grab the medic bag, the door opened, and I walked in coming up. And before I could come, I saw floor, space, and feet. And I looked, and I looked up, and here this guy was hanging. He had hung himself. Mm. And uh, he had been there probably from that morning when his roommate had talked to him and because uh, his eyes to all the stuff. And uh, I remember uh, a Tupac song was playing. The young lady name was Mary because he had written on the window, uh, on the mirror, on that right hand corner in red lipstick. And he had written a note to her and he had hung himself. And uh, I, I 
stood up and I'm looking and my lieutenant was still and I looked at him, he just said, go. So I left. And I tell people that and say, well, all the stuff, yeah, I've seen folks crash, I've been burnt, seen people burned, all that, but that is um, someone took their life. They didn't shoot themselves, they didn't jump off the building, they hung themselves, and the length from his feet to the floor meant that he meant to do that. Mm -hmm. And I see that just as clear today as I did the day it happened. The real facts and the reality of what firefighters and public safety professionals uh, encounter and face on a day-to-day -day basis, um, some of the stuff you never forget, uh, you never lose it from your memory, uh, and it does have a wear and sometimes a tear on your, on your psyche, your mindset, your mental capacity. Also interesting is how you dealt with it. Uh, when we see firefighters on a day-to-day -day basis, the truck going down the street, we don't think. As regular citizens, we really don't give thought to what they really are encountering uh, during the course of a day or during the middle of the night when we're home sleep. So we really appreciate that. Now, as you shared that story, I want to go back a little bit more into the importance of taking care of public safety personnel as we're dealing with mental health and mental illness. Why as a chief? Because I've heard you uh, stand up and, and really talk and advocate on behalf of the, of the firefighters, the men and women uh, that uh, are part of your department when it comes to mental health and mental well-being. Talk about that, Chief, and why that's so important to you. It's important because we don't need our firefighters just physically healthy. We need them mentally, emotionally, and spiritually health, healthy. And just saying, uh, back in the day, they said, little boys don't cry. Yeah, they do. Yes, we do. They need to, <laughs> and we should encourage that. And so firefighters are a male-dominated profession. Uh, women represent maybe 2 two to 3% nationwide of firefighters. So having a, 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 a station full of men, and they're teasing each other, and something's bothering, they're sitting there being all stoic. No, you need to release that. So we implemented, I implemented, a mental health wellness plan back in 2021. And matter of fact, all of my fire personnel, to include the admin staff, have just went through their wellness check for the year. Wonderful. Uh, Dr. Moore comes out with her team, sits down with them, and they go through uh, questions. And one of the things I, when I first started this, people say, well, you can't make me uh, talk about my personal life. You're absolutely right. But I can make you meet with Dr. Moore. That's mandatory. You're gonna meet with her, go through her assessment. Now, I can't tell you need to talk about any personal things you have going on but you're gonna do that initial meeting. Well, guess what? Some of them being there, they, can I call Dr. Moore? I wanna to talk to Dr. Moore, I have wow. things going on. Hey, is this open to my kids? Is this open to my wife? It's a family thing. Mental health is important. And so my personnel really appreciate that. That was something that wasn't, was new to them. They were, felt that they had to be tough, keep it in. I had, um, when I first started here, if I may, 2019, matter of fact, it was a Tuesday evening, uh, BOC meeting, and there was a drowning of a, a kid, a little three-year-old, I believe. And we were meeting at the elementary school over off of Klondike, I believe, that's my memory. And um, last year, uh, one of my firefighters um, actually had been bailed on that. Why? Because he had a kid at home the same, it was, like I said, mm. that incident resembled his home. Well, he'd been struggling with that, struggling with that. Got him with Dr. Moore, they talked about it. He needed some additional assistance. We got that, and he is doing awesome. Families coming together um, and just blossoming, not just professionally, but personally. You gotta have that work-life balance. You've done a fantastic work advocating for mental health and mental well-being for the Rockdale County Fire Department, and we certainly do appreciate it. But Chief, you did something a few years ago that I've talked about and I've kept it on the radar, fit to fight fire. Yeah. <laughs> That's the physical part of it. We talked about the mental part of it, but the physical part of it, I, I just think it's so important that firefighters and fire personnel are physically fit mm -hmm. to go up a flight of stairs, to, to, to climb a ladder. Talk about fit to fight fire and why that's so important, even through the recruit process and through uh, everyday firefighters who are seasoned firefighters staying in shape 
healthy and fit to fight fire. Talk about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So once again, that physical part, when you come in to, to even be accepted or hired into the fire department, you have to go through a physical agility test. Uh, throughout the year, we do um, some type of physical fitness. Uh, but what I, what I want to make sure that we weren't pencil whipping nothing. Because just like suicide kills, heart attacks, high blood pressure, diabetes. And so I wanted to get something that was uh, standardized for all of the department. I wanted the department to have all of the same equipment, every station, and to get uh, uh, someone to be able to come in and, and work out a plan for you. So we uh, sent some of our members to get the pure fitness training. Okay. And so we have two per shift, give or take. And what they do, they go around and they did a physical assessment on everybody in Rockdale County Fire Rescue. Wow. To see where you are. It was a little reluctant because people thought we was trying to single out who could do it. It wasn't about that. Okay. You, you're hired. You're a firefighter. You're doing your firefighting job. This is about us impacting your life in a positive way so you continue doing that job. And so once we got those assessments done, uh, then people start meeting. Hey, Chairman Nesbitt, uh, I'm here for you. What, you know, I, this is where you work. What do you want to work on? where you see yourself at, and build individual plans. Okay. And then, thankfully to, to you and the commissioners, we were able to get new equipment. So all of the stations have the exact same workout equipment. Wonderful. And, uh, and they use it daily. You know, physical fitness and being agile, uh, the agility program, when a new recruit uh, comes to Rockdale, let's just take it this way. If someone who's watching this broadcast and they're thinking, you know what, I'm going to give fire service career uh, an opportunity for, for my life. And but I'm not in the greatest shape, but I would love to be a firefighter. I don't know whether I can pass the PT or the physical agility. What do you say to that person? And because you just talked about a customized program. Here's a new person may not be in the greatest shape. So they think talk to talk to that person. So what I would like to say to that person, if I may, I'm going to look right over here. Look, what, one of the things I changed, there is a physical agility plan. When you come in, you try out. What I look for is that person that doesn't quit. You may not be able to do all 20, 25 push-ups, all 30 or 35 sit-ups, or run that mile and a half when you enter, but you didn't quit, you kept pushing forward. So we're going to give you an opportunity to come be a part of our recruit class and go through that physical fitness training at the end of which we do expect for you to be able to get to these and take care of those tasks. But initially coming in, so often a lot of people are not given an opportunity. Mm. As I said, I was 36. I, hey, I had three children. But I was given an opportunity. I kept pushing myself. I didn't quit. And I had to run that mile and a half in 13 minutes. I did it in 12.57. Wow. You remember look where I am today. <laughs> All right. So there's an opportunity. We want what I look for and what I've instructed my training staff when we're doing the hiring process. Yeah, just that most physical fit person doesn't always make the greatest firefighter. But that person with the will and the determination to succeed and keep pushing, we don't want to turn that away. Chief, what I'm hearing you say is persistence. Persistence. Having that tenacity to just to keep going. Yes. Having an attitude to get in there and never quit and never give up. Yes, sir. And your team will coach them through the process and get them where they need to be. Absolutely. Fit to fight fire. We have to have firefighters who are physically and mentally able to go into a structure to support their co colleagues and coworkers on an incident scene and to make sure for their own well-being, they are mentally prepared and physically fit to fight fire. Yes, sir. Chief, we've got so much to talk about. I mean, I could just sit here and talk to you all day. We don't have that much time. We are going to go to break. I'm looking back after break. We're coming back and talking about more of what's going on with Rockdale County Fire and Rescue. Folks, you're watching another segment of Chop It Up with the Chairman. We have here our featured guest is Rockdale County's Chief Firefighter, Chief Marion McDaniel. We'll be right back on Channel 23. Y'all do know this is the war? Can you say war on middle? War on middle. Come on, say it like you mean it. War on middle.
We are out here about to attack this war on litter. Um, we're going to, you know, all the, the different departments, we probably have about 10 departments have shown up uh, to converge on Rockdale County, right, to hit our right-of-ways and our, our streets and, and pick up all this litter and illegal dumping and anything else. This is our largest uh, contingency of employees and volunteers this year ever. We've got nearly 200 people out today uh, with the war on litter. I think it's a good look for leadership every now and then to be out here with your people. You have to inspect what you expect, and you have to lead by example. So I'm not going to ask anybody that works for Rockdale County government to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. Uh, so, and, and, and the beauty of Rockdale County, you have a chairman who wears two hats. I serve as the chairman and the CEO, the manager of day-to-day -day operations. This allows me to deal with all of the corporate issues of Rockdale County, and it also allows me to deal with all the hands-on tangible, touchable issues in terms of talking to citizens, going to where the issues are, being out on the, uh, on the ground, in the trenches with the employees. Folks, this is Chairman Oz Nesbitt, another segment of Chop It Up with the Chairman, and our featured guest is none other than Rockdale County's Fire Chief, Mary McDaniel. Chief, this has been an exciting segment. We've had a chance to talk about your career, the start of your, your motivation, your drive. We talked about mental health and uh, fit to fight fire and the physical uh, agility test and all the process of getting a firefighter on board, both mentally and physically. Chief. Uh, we're here again at the tail end of the month of February 2023, and it's Black History Month. You, again, you are the first African-American female fire chief in Rockdale County's history. What does that really mean to you personally and professionally? Quite honestly, just uh, that I'm entering into my, just close out my second year, going into my third, and uh, I had an aha moment just last year. It's like, man, I, I, I'm, this is me. I'm this little girl from Grady Homes Projects, as they were back in the day. And look at me now, I'm what I've uh, developed myself to be. Um, and so many people come up to me and talk about it, even just yesterday. Every day somebody's walking up and saying, hey, I see the stripes. What is, uh, tell me about it. And, and uh, one of the questions I get, say, well, did you fight fire? It's like, yeah, they didn't just pull me off the street. I had to fight fire, but it's huge. Um, when I was appointed to the rank of fire chief here in Rockdale County as the first African-American woman, African-American and woman fire chief of Rockdale County, uh, I also meant that I was the 12th African-American woman to achieve that rank nationwide. Wait a minute, Chief. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, it's already a big deal that you're the first African-American female here in Rockdale County, but I think you just said that you were number 12 in the United States. Wow. And with this being black history, I have to give homage to uh, Rosemary Cloud, who was a retired assistant chief from Atlanta Fire and went on to become the fire chief for the city of East Point. Okay. The first African-American woman to achieve that rank in 2002 in the United States. So. A mentor of mine, someone that helped me early in my career, what, 2002, 2020, 18 years later, I became number 12. 
What a wonderful story. It's, it's beautiful, and we still can't are in contact today, not all the time, but she's still around, still doing great things for the fire service community. Now, uh, talking about black history, in the state of Georgia, let me say nationwide, I made number 12, but since that time, I want to say it's probably 15 African-American women that serve in this rank nationwide. Four are in the state of Georgia. Only four black female fire chiefs in the state of Georgia. One, two, three, Oh. Uh, if you know me, if you know Chief McDaniel, Marion McDaniel, Marion is mouthy. <laughs> She's always been. My mom would tell you that. And she'd say, man, I can't believe that little tight eyed little baby that I, I, I gave birth to grew up to be such a, a wonderful uh, woman. And so she spoke about that always. And um, when we talk about uh, having some support and someone to talk to, that was my support. I could go home and talk to my mom about anything, any. Uh, rough days, not just when I was a firefighter, but even as I've served in the fire chief, I could talk to her about things and she would always give me that wisdom. Chief McDermott, your mother was your number one cheerleader. Uh, i never forget uh, when you first came to work for us and I don't think you had made six months and all of a sudden I got a card yes. in the mail uh, and it was from your mom yes. that came to me. Uh -huh. And I said to Miss Lee, I says, who is this? She's Miss Lee smiled. She says, that's Chief McDaniel's mom. Mm -hmm. I say, wow, this is really, really nice. Yeah. And I hear what you're saying about, mom, it's not about you, this is about me, but it was about her. Mm -hmm. She was so proud of your achievements and your accomplishments and just being, I remember the day you got sworn in. Mm -hmm. You're right, she had a grand smile on her face. Mm -hmm. Your mom has been your number one cheerleader. Yeah. And I heard you talk about uh, her being a part of your life and the transition. Chief McDaniel, your mother is really proud of you today. And I really appreciate you talking about the impact from your father and keeping those shoes nice and shiny, having that support system all the way around. Well, you've done a fantastic work and you continue to do good work here in Rockdale County and you continue to make both of your parents very proud. And we're proud of you as well. Thank you, sir. You're responsible for how many firefighters currently with Rockdale County Fire and Rescue? Well, my complete staff to include admin is right at 180. 180. Firefighters, uh, we have about 117 uh, with about the other 30 that are in the uh, recruit class. So you have all together 180 folks. In a perfect world, how many firefighters does it really take to take care of a, a county the size of Rockdale County? And I'm talking about folks who are out there responding to calls. In a perfect world, we should have four firefighters per piece of equipment. We have nine engines and two trucks. Each one of those should be staffed with four persons. One to drive, uh, one person's riding in charge, and you got two in the back to uh, facilitate the operations. But they come together as a team. Uh, I often talk about on a single alarm fire, you send two engines, or well, they talk from a personnel perspective. On a single alarm fire, you should have maybe 15 people there to carry out those functions. Well, for Rockdale County Fire Rescue, prior to where we are going now, for us to get that 15 total, we gotta send three or four pieces of equipment. Wow. Because we only had two or three on there. Now we're having three or four. Uh, my firefighters are so excited to say, hey, I, I came to work and it was four of us. I know what to do. Or we were also, we had implemented during COVID what we called forced hire. Uh, we uh, was telling you you had to work, but we gave you an opportunity 30 to 45, 45 days out to select those days. Well, with the addition of the new fire positions, we haven't had to force hire. I mean, people can get home to their families, they can rest and recuperate. So I want to know, my firefighters know that I truly appreciate them. I often say to them, this is not about Fire Chief Marion McDaniel, it's about all of us. We are a team. I'm the face of that team, good, bad, and different, but I always want to make sure people recognize you all because you all are doing the work. My role is to make sure that you are healthy and you have what you need. And you can communicate with me and we're gonna to come together and make it out. Like I talked about, this is not my badge. This is not my patch. This is our patch. And I want them to know that I say that to them. I truly do. Uh, we have conversations, sometimes they stop by the office, but I wanna take this opportunity to truly thank the men and women of Rockdale County Fire Rescue for their support of me and their dedication and commitment to the citizens of Rockdale County.
Well, Chief, we really appreciate it. You've gone through some very uh, challenging times here in Rockdale County as we've been a part of what has happened in the whole country with the pandemic and COVID-19. Uh, one of the struggles and challenges that I know, I'm aware that you face, was uh, that you had to shut down a station or two uh, due to people being sick with COVID. Mm -hmm. And let me not just say people being sick, but firefighters yes. being sick with COVID. Yes. Because a lot of times people don't think that the service providers even experience what the people were providing the service for. Firefighters have sick days. They get sick. They don't have, they have kids in school. They have the same thing that everybody else has to deal with. And there were a couple of times, a few times, I think, that you actually had to shut down a fire station, but service to the county never stopped. Absolutely, and the, the station we would select to close down was Station 8 because it's centrally located. Well, that area is co covered by Station 7, Station 6, Station 1, so there was no impact to service delivery. Um, and we would take those personnel and distribute them out to other stations to make sure that we have the staffing, the appropriate staffing to mitigate whatever call we received. Chief, uh, one last point, you was reaching out to the heart, um, to your employees, your firefighters. Repeat that message again, that you really want them to hear from you about their service and dedication. I want to thank them for their support of me. And yes, I am the fire chief. However, my role is not as important as their role. Their role, they're out there, boots on the ground, delivering the services. I'm here to support them. I want to support them physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. I want to make sure that they have everything that they need. And I truly thank them and appreciate them for their support, commitment, and dedication to the citizens of Rockdale County. Wow, that's leadership. Chief McDaniel, thank you so much, and thank you for your leadership. And again, we appreciate the service of the men and women of the Rockdale Fire and Rescue.